Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. Today I want to talk about devotion to the Blessed Sacrament at Garabandal, in particular the subject of communion in the hand, which is a subject that has grown more and more prominent in recent months. At Garabandal, the children received Holy Communion from the hands of the angel. The angel brought them Holy Communion whenever Mass was not offered in the church and the children were unable to attend Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion in the normal way. Because they were devout children and even before the apparitions, people in the town went to Mass frequently. Their lives revolved around the church and being before the Blessed Sacrament. Even before the apparitions, the children were accustomed to go to the church and to visit the Blessed Sacrament. It was a, a village, a very pious village. The angel brought the children Holy Communion and he did so placing it upon their tongues. Whether this was an actual grace or whether this was the physical Blessed Sacrament that had been taken by the angel from a church and made invisible, we don't know for certain. It could be that it's an actual grace, that is the children receive, they see a vision of the host and they receive an actual grace equivalent or like receiving the Blessed Sacrament. A bit like if you make a spiritual communion, you, if you do it devoutly, you receive an actual grace, which is like the grace of receiving our Lord in Holy Communion, but is not exactly the same. So the children received Holy Communion on their tongue by the angel. And this is the first thing of note. The angel did not place the invisible host in the children's hands. Imagine if he had done so. There would be something immediately profane and odd and weird about the angel, the children with their eyes closed, putting their hands out and then mysteriously picking up something from their hand and placing it upon their tongue. Even the idea of the angel who touched the mouth of the prophet Isaiah with a coal in order to make it and make it able to reveal God's word to the people that the, the holy angel would, would put the coal in Isaiah's hand and then get him to touch it on his own mouth. It just is so inappropriate. The, 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 the angel isn't divine. The, the angel is, is, is preternatural, is greater than our nature, and he carries something divine. And that this, this holy angel carrying the, the divine would then just place the most divine into the hand of the of the individual it's it's there's something immediately odd about it and and that's the very reason why the angel did not give the children holy communion in their hands he placed it upon their tongue and we have the great miracle or the little miracle the milagruco where a visible host appeared on the mouth of Conchita. And let us not forget that even in Conchita's doubts about the other apparitions at Garabandal, she never doubted the Milagruco. Conchita never doubted that the angel had appeared on the 18th of July and placed the Blessed Sacrament upon her tongue, or rather the 19th of July as it turned out. And there's a whole whole discussion point there why the angel didn't appear on the anticipated day. It's most likely because she had received Holy Communion on the 18th already. And so St. Michael the Archangel waited until the 19th because church law doesn't require you or did certainly didn't at that time to receive the Blessed Sacrament twice in one day. So Holy Communion on the Tongue is emphasized by the Miragruco. Also Holy Communion on the Tongue at Garabandal is emphasized by the fact that Hasinta had this dream that I've mentioned in a previous video, a dream or a prophetic nightmare concerning the future innovation of communion in the hand. And she was so frightened about this. And when she told the other villagers and her mother, they were appalled by the very thought of people having to receive the Blessed Sacrament in their hand or the idea that this could possibly be a good thing. And they said, this will never happen. As they've grown older, Every report and indication suggests that all the children, the four children, continued only to receive the Blessed Sacrament upon their tongue. Devotion to the Blessed Sacrament at Garabandal extends beyond, beyond communion on the tongue as opposed to in the hand. It also extends to the fact that the children visited the Blessed Sacrament. They visited the Blessed Sacrament frequently. 
In fact, the second message given to Conchita was that the Blessed Sacrament is given less and less reverence, less and less devotion. And we were told that we should love our Lord more in the Blessed Sacrament. This was at the time of the Vatican Council. No one could imagine that all of a sudden practices of Eucharistic adoration, visits to the Blessed Sacrament were going to appear, were going to disappear. But it all began to happen from the Council onwards. Yes, Conchita said, less and less importance is given to the Eucharist. Well, that's what Our Lady conveyed to her. Less and less importance is given to the Eucharist. They were being asked in their own lives to make up for this. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. This is the message that Conchita was given. And this is something that really emphasizes the importance of the Blessed Sacrament at Garabandal. Think upon the passion of Jesus. That's the last words, the last words from Conchita's second message. Thinking on the passion of Jesus is also about devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, because our Lord is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. And the Blessed Sacrament captures, it captures and puts before our eyes the very moment that our Lord offers himself for the whole world. That's captured there in the monstrance for us to gaze upon our Lord giving himself for us totally. Devotion to the Blessed Sacrament was also emphasized in Garabandal through the prayers the children were taught. They were taught the Anima Christi, the soul of Christ prayer. In one interview, Mary Loli says that they didn't know that prayer before the angel taught it to them, a prayer ascribed to St. Ignatius of Loyola. They didn't know it. It's a prayer that, that, that we know quite well as faithful Catholics, and it's a prayer that priests have in the Roman Missal, and they're encouraged to say it every day after Mass. And the angel gave it his divine sanction. It is a beautiful prayer, the Anima Christi. Also, they were required to do, do the confiteor before they received the Blessed Sacrament from the hands of the angel. Again, in my view, as I've mentioned earlier, I think that this was an actual grace, a spiritual communion that they received from the hand of the angel, with the possible exception of the Milagruco. My reason for that is because the children, when they were at Mass ordinarily, after receiving Holy Communion, would have stayed longer in thanksgiving than the amount of time that they'd portrayed as doing after their invisible communions. After their invisible communions, they seem to have only a, a small moment of reflection and devotion, saying the Anima Christi, and a sm short moment of interior prayer. But of course, really, devotion to the Blessed Sacrament warrants a sustained period of prayerful reflection, meditation, thanksgiving, after receiving our Lord. Really, the saints teach us that after you've received Holy Communion, you should remain in prayer for at least 15 minutes while our Lord has dissolved and the accidents have uh, reverted or have changed, so you've no longer got the Blessed Sacrament in you. So I'm sure that that's what makes me think that the invisible communions were were spiritual communions, actual graces that were building up the fervor for the, within the children's hearts towards the devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. One last point about devotion to the Blessed Sacrament at Garabandal, and that is that the Garabandal publicists have always promoted a litany called Litany of Eucharistic Reparation. They understood from the beginning of their movement that a big element of promoting devotion to, to Our Lady's message of Garabandal was having Eucharistic reparation, reparation for the sins, the offences, the sacrileges that are committed against our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. It sounds so much like the Fatima message the angel of Portugal teaching the children in Portugal, in Fatima, that beautiful prayer asking them to make reparation for the outrages, sacrileges and indifference with which he is most offended. The Garabandal movement has continued that aspect of the Fatima message. And for me, it lends a credibility to the message of Garabandal and to the truth of the Garabandal apparitions, or at least a large part of them. This has been Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.